Hey, it's Vanessa with Data Savvy TV, and we're bringing in the new year. Do you need a college degree to become a data analyst? Well, as most questions you'll hear from a database person, it depends. Um, <laughs> What I've been doing lately is been doing searches on indeed.com, um, just looking up job titles in my city and checking to see whether or not they require a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, um, or a PhD. Almost never do I see PhD unless it's more of like a teaching job, but even then, it's still master's level, um, but I have been seeing a lot, there's my light, I have been seeing a lot of job postings that either require a bachelor's degree plus two to four years of experience, um, talk about that too, or um, a bachelor's degree or equivalent experience, and equivalent experience is typically like five years in the workplace, so. I guess you could kind of say you do need one, but I actually believe that it's more about who you know than whether or not you have a degree. I know quite a few people who are doing very well in the IT space, um, some that have been working there for over 10 years, some over 30 years some longer than I've been around, <laughs> than uh, older than I am, I guess. And um, 30 years is pretty close, just, just in case you were wondering. Um, and the hardest part, I think, to hear about that is you have to have the experience or you have to know someone. The benefit that comes from knowing someone unless you know you've been part of an organization where you were passed over for a position or a promotion because you know someone's related to someone or someone brought in a friend is that knowing someone gets your foot in the door it's kind of the same thing if you think about it from the perspective of would you hire a friend of a friend to do the landscaping at your home or would you go online and just find someone who's highly rated? Well, that word of mouth that came from your friend is probably going to mean more than, you know, 10, 50, 100 reviews from someone online because it's kind of the same as, hey, this person looks good on paper, but I can get a personal recommendation from someone I trust and know personally over someone I just found online. That's one of the benefits with knowing someone to get in somewhere. Um, the benefits with college degrees is when you don't know someone, it kind of gets your resume higher in the stack, maybe. It all really depends on the system that that company's using and also whether the hiring manager's diligent in checking through those resumes, they might not put it in an order where it's like, you know, higher degrees first in the stack either. But one thing that it does show, especially with the bachelor's degree, is that you can stick to something and see it through and finish it. And then a master's degree is kind of helping to solidify to say, hey, you know, I took a specialization in this area but it's not necessarily going to get you the job. The thing that I've seen more often than not is experience, asking for experience, but it's kind of difficult when you're just getting into an, a new industry and you know, you're know you trying to get the experience to prove that you know what you're doing or you know to for someone just to give you the opportunity to show them that your valuable asset to their team. What I've been seeing lately, especially with those coding boot camps or those online schools that 
you know, have a curated curriculum for you, which essentially all colleges is a curated set of content that you learn or that you prove that you've, you know, C's get degrees, you can at least show um, that you can get a C <laughs> in a course. Um, but with the online schools and coding boot camps, a lot of them now are graduating you with a portfolio. And what's really great about that is you have something that's tangible that a future employer can look at and say, hey, this person was able to do this, or this person was able to build that app, or this person was able to solve this business problem. I'm not necessarily saying go to an online school or those schools or the coding boot camps either. What I am recommending is creating a portfolio, especially if you're just starting out in a new field. A great place for data analytics technology, um, a really popular one is GitHub. So if you can get coding samples or structure the files in your GitHub portfolio to kind of show off the project. The thing with GitHub is that it's a source control, meaning that you can put code in there and every time that you change your code, you can save a new version of it, but you could always revert back to an older version as well. So it gives you that flexibility, that capability really to be able to do that but you can also use it as an online portfolio that just works like the file folder structure on your computer. And there's a way to do it via the command prompt. If you don't know what that is, you don't really have to worry because there's another way to do it on the website too. <laughs> just up uploading files through there. But honestly, it probably would be good for you to learn how to do it the command prompt way or the git way. Git is actually the name of the coding language for um, using GitHub and doing source control via like a command prompt kind of thing. Or another uh, option that you have is creating your own website like a blog and then putting that stuff there. I think LinkedIn, though it doesn't necessarily have like a portfolio section, you could upload files there. So maybe you could put a zip file of your coding samples or your project that you finish if it's like a PowerPoint or you know a report. You can put that all into one zipped up folder and put like a text file, a readme file that explains what it is and what people are looking at. If it's not proprietary information and if you're okay with it being out there public to the world so the same kind of thing with github github is public as well unless you have a paid subscription where you can have private files so do you need a college degree to become a data analyst or a database developer no but <laughs> you do need to show that you have the skills to meet the competencies of whatever job or position you're going for and I highly highly recommend doing your own audit of all the jobs that are in your city that you're trying to get and see what the majority of them do require because some do in fact will require the bachelors I don't see as many master's degrees um, but I definitely encourage everyone to have some sort of sample portfolio thing. I've done a couple of times on interviews where I printed out some code and I took it with me so that when they asked me, you know, what kind of projects have you worked on in the past? And I have that code right there in front of me that I can give to them and I can step through with them what that code is doing. I also have the electronic version of that on GitHub. If you have any suggestions or want to share your experience with trying to get into a new field in technology, let me know in the comments below. If you're not subscribed yet, consider subscribing. I want to do more videos like this where it's just 
hitting on a topic about careers in data analysis and talk about more of my interviewing experiences, do some general talks of what it's like to work in this field. I myself have worked as a data analyst, a user acceptance testing operations, software requirements gathering analyst. I don't know, they call them different things, business systems, business analyst, operations analyst, application systems analyst, whatever. Um, and I've also been a database developer, so I want to um, talk about those kinds of things. And I do want to get into statistics and talking a little bit more about what method to use when and what types of business problems you can address with different statistical methods. I'm thinking about actually starting a series called Breakfast and Statistics. I don't know, because I really like breakfast. <laughs> and it could also be a podcast. I don't know, maybe. I'm thinking about it, but whatever. And you're going to see this messiness of my bedroom because, I don't know, I just, like, I was doing the whole setup with a backdrop and everything, and it looked nice. But sometimes I just want to be able to turn on a camera and go. And with the setup, I always had to be like, okay, I need this. I need, you know, full script. I need to do all my makeup and my hair and all, whatever. So, and I want to get more comfortable on the camera. Um, see how I do this in a year from now, I guess. And yeah, thanks for watching and best of luck in the data analytics and marketing world. Bye. What? Okay. <laughs> and we're doing, uh, let's see, bringing in the new year. Da -da -da -da.